Kia ora, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and today I just want to do something a little bit different and review the Starter Assets third person character controller package released by Unity Technologies themselves. So they have released this package, it's completely free, 70 megabytes, and it's got some pretty cool features. It uses um, all the latest uh, input system, it uses Cine Machine, um, and it also has UI canvas overlays for mobile joystick. Uh, etc which I think a ton of people have been asking basically how do you create on-screen controls um, with Cine Machine and the new input system so this is a great example of finally how to do that okay so I have it running already in Unity here and first thing to notice is the character itself um, it is pretty cool looking it's very smooth um, the mesh looks like really clean um, there's even like some reflections on the helmet and stuff here uh, which is pretty cool but yeah just a basic sort of um uh, prototype character um, yeah next thing to notice is the camera controls so um, yeah it can spin around uh, 360 degrees uh, horizontally with the the camera and the vertical is uh, it's actually locked um, it's basically clamped at these uh, sort of extreme values so next is the character can basically walk in all directions um, using I'm just using the keyboard at the moment there are it does also have out of the box support for a controller um, I've tested that and it all just works smoothly as well which is pretty cool um, and the yeah you just notice that the character kind of like orients to face whatever direction uh, you are aiming with the keyboard um, so there's no strafing or anything like that <laughs> which is I was a little bit gutted about because I need like um, you know like a proper like strafe animation set um, and I was hoping this would have that but uh, not to worry yeah this is still like a, a great kind of example of how to create like you know more adventure style um, third person character controllers sweet um, so yeah also if I walk forward and rotate the mouse the the player will also just uh, continue to walk in the direction of the, the camera is facing um, if I hold down the left shift then the character can sprint um, and uh, hitting space the character can also jump so the jump is actually quite interesting um, when the character hits the ground it's got a landing animation and this uh, this animation that's played it's a little bit hard to see with this camera angle uh, but it's actually different depending on how fast the, the character is going so if it's walking and it lands it plays a different animation to like when it's standing um, also versus running as well plays a different one again which I think is just like a really nice touch that they they added. Um, yeah, it just makes the character a lot more cleaner animation wise. And yeah, I think it is it's pretty cool that they did that. Um, so yeah, I mean that's pretty much the all the controls for the character. So movement, um, the mouse look, uh, the sprinting, and the jumping. There's no other controls. Um, that's that's the the what this character does. <clears throat> so uh, for the environment itself, uh, there's just like some stairs here some more stairs here and you can jump down here and there's this like little wee sort of section inside which doesn't have too much in it um, you can also jump on these boxes um, nothing is dynamic i'm not really sure what this pole is is on about here uh were they supposed to attach like a flag or something to it i don't know um maybe they were testing something with it um but yeah that pole is also <laughs> in the level for some reason uh sweet so yeah i mean that's pretty much it for the environment um maybe you can just like quickly show you the some of the textures uh, that they're using for the environment so yeah there's the orange sort of texture they have here um there's the blue one and the yeah etc so yeah one cool thing is there's got an, an emission texture set for these textures here so um, you can actually bump up the emission of the ground and you can actually change the color of these of these lines here in the ground uh, which looks pretty cool um, it's kind of fun to play with and yeah I just thought that was a cool feature that they actually added the emission map to to the the textures here sweet so um, what else do we have uh, pretty much that's it for the environment really everything is static there's nothing dynamic in this level yeah so um, if we just jump into the character now, we can start sort of breaking down everything about this character. Um, so uh, starting with the animator component. So the animator doesn't have root motion. It's, they're not using root motion and their update mode is set to normal. So if we open up the, it's also using a humanoid uh, avatar. Um, so if we open up the animation controller here, we can see all of the animation states. So there are four animation states. The first one 
idle walk run blend is a blend tree um, and if we hop into this we can see the three different uh, animations they're using this is the idle this is the walk and this is the run so if I select the blend tree hit play um, you can kind of see yeah by dragging this thing I'm, I'm still in play mode in the editor so um, it's not too hard to see but yeah you can obviously um, see those three different animations blending based on the speed parameter here so the different parameters um, is yeah speed jump grounded freefall and motion speed and all of these are pretty expected except for this motion speed so everything about the state is um, pretty standard really but the one thing I didn't expect was this speed multiplier thing I didn't know you could do this but you can add a multiplier like an animation parameter here and you can select it from a drop down list and so long as it's a float you can actually multiply the speed of this um, the state depending on what this value is so this motion speed what that's actually been driven from is an analog controller so for the keyboard keyboards uh, digital um, so it's just always set to one but for a gamepad this can actually have a value that is um, less than one and that will actually slow down the animation speed uh, which just makes it look ever so slightly smoother um, which yeah I thought was uh, pretty cool that they added this I didn't even know that you could do this um, so yeah that's it pretty much for just the the standard kind of locomotion um, then from that it basically transitions into the jump uh, state here um, when this this uh, property here this jump is set to true transitions into the the jump state and here whoops if I just select that I should be able to see it actually um, yeah we can actually just see it playing the jump animation um, then once the jump is finished um, has exit time is set to true so it transitions into the in air state and if we just have a look at that animation that's just the sort of looping animation that uh, just gets played over and over again until you land um, it, and you can also transition directly from the locomotion state into the in air state um, from this uh, freefall parameter here and uh, then yeah when the when you actually hit the ground grounder gets it to true goes back to the jump land state and this one is actually a blend tree so if we open this up we can see the three different um, animations so this is landing from a vertical jump this is landing from a walking jump and then this is landing from a running jump and it basically just blends between them based on the speed property here which I thought was yeah it's uh, pretty cool um, it's a great idea so that is pretty much it for this animation um, state so uh, well yeah there's there's not really too much more to it so if we just continue down the list um, that's the animator next thing is the character controller so they're using a character controller not a rigid body um, which yeah I think in a lot of cases makes sense for a character um, so one thing they have done is set the minimum move distance to zero which is something I also mentioned in my video so it's cool to see that they've done that here as well um, the skin width they've changed from 0 0.008 or 08 I can't remember what the default value is but down to 0 0.02 I'm not 100% sure exactly what that does but I'll look into that um, because this is basically the holy grail of examples right now um, so the next that's pretty much kind of standard for the character controller height offset radius all of that stuff is just kind of normal sweet so the next component is the third person controller and this is like the main controller script it's basically split into three sections the player section uh, which also has a jump section as well the player grounded and the cine machine section so I can kind of show you what all of these parameters do um, so the speed parameter here this just changes the basic speed of the character um, so I think something like four actually feels a little bit better you're not sort of walking around the level so slowly uh, which I think is kind of nice on the keyboard um, if I kind of if you increase this speed though the um, so if I just leave that at four and now hit shift the sprint doesn't feel so dramatic so I think if you increase this value you probably want to increase this value as well and then you can get sort of more of a dramatic sprint effect um, which I think yeah these values I think feel uh, a little bit better for, for what I would want um, so this rotation smooth time this is basically how quickly the character will rotate and face the direction on the keyboard um, so it's, it's just like really snappy now 
Um, if I increase this maximum to like the other direction, then it's very slow and floaty and it <laughs> feels pretty horrible. So I think the default value that they've gone with here, the 0.12 feels uh, pretty good. Uh, the speed rate change, this is basically the acceleration of the character. Um, so if you have it set to a really low value, the character will take a long time to accelerate and decelerate. Um, so yeah, again, I think the, the default value of 10 they've got there feels pretty good. Uh, jump height, obviously that's just like how high you can jump. Shump. And yeah, one complaint I guess I probably have is like, yeah, even with this maximum jump height, it doesn't feel like the character is jumping very far given how high it's jumping. I would probably have expected a little bit of forward uh, force or something like that when the character jumps, um, just so it kind of jumps forward. Um, but yeah, again, this is like a prototype asset, so yeah, um, I think it's probably fine to ignore that. Uh, gravity, again, yeah, if I leave that at 3, then we can increase the gravity to like 30. The character will fall much faster. But note, when you do this, uh, Cine Machine doesn't catch up to the character very quickly. So if you do want to fix that, um, you can go to Cine Machine, which I'll cover properly in a minute, and uh, set the damping to like 0 0.1 on the y-axis. And now the character will stay in frame of the camera much more uh, precisely, which I think looks a little bit better. Um, but yeah, before we get to Cine Machine, um, what else do we have? The grounded check. Oh yeah, so they've gone with the physics overlap sphere um, check here, rather than using the character controller is grounded, which uh, I think pretty much everybody hates, including myself. It flickers all the time, doesn't work, nobody has success with it. Um, I don't know what that streak there is, but um, yeah, so I think I screwed up a material earlier, maybe. I'm not sure what I did there, maybe if I drag this one. I'm not sure what that streak is. Is that supposed to be there? Mm. So I'm getting distracted now. Nope. I can't even do that in the same view. What is that? Oh uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I think I just accidentally changed the material before. Sweet, okay. What was I saying? The uh, overlap sphere check uh, for the player grounded. Yeah, so they've gone with physics overlap sphere rather than the character controller is grounded. Um, so they've got a radius and an offset value that you can set there and that's pretty common nowadays so it's quite cool to see that that is the approach that they're using as well. So for the Cine Machine uh, properties here, so this is kind of interesting. Um, there's a sub object of the player called Player Camera Root and that's what the script points to. It points to this Player Camera Root and uh, the Cine Machine camera also points to this object here. And if I disable this, um, I can, if I rotate this object here, you can now see that will rotate the camera. And that's basically what the script does, how it controls the camera. It takes the values from the input system and then modifies the rotation of this player camera root object. Um, so notice that I'm not rotating Cinemachine itself, I'm rotating this player camera root object, which Cinemachine points to. And this third person controller script also points to that object is not pointing to Cine Machine, it's pointing to this intermediate object. And having the script rotate this object here causes the camera to rotate, which, um, yeah, is quite a clean way of doing it, really. Um, it just sort of means the, the character itself doesn't need a handle to the camera. The camera can just sort of uh, focus on this object instead. Um, yeah, and the speaking of the camera, I guess the Cine Machine virtual camera, um, they're using the third person follow uh, body mode here, which is cool because they added that recently. Whoops, I don't know what I just did. Um, but yeah, that's a, a pretty cool feature, uh, which just yeah, really easily lets you sort of control the, the kind of properties of, of your third person character, like everything you'd expect, which is nice. Um, so what else do we have to cover? The clamp, yeah, if I um, re-enable this component, the top clamp, that's just, uh, yeah, controlling, if I set that to 90, now I can like look straight at the ground. Um, and similarly, if I set the bottom clamp to minus 90, I can look like straight in the air, uh, which, yeah, just is some kind of, yeah, nice features. You can also override the camera angle for some reason if you want to do that. And you can lock the camera position as well if you want to uh, lock it for whatever reason. Sweet, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the third person controller. Um, 
Actually, just one thing before I move on to this, just quickly dive into the script. I don't want to go into this into too much detail, but one thing I did want to point out was um, they're doing basically everything inside the update function. So the jump and gravity, uh, the grounded check and the character control and move function, all of that is done inside update rather than fixed update. And uh, inside late update, that's where they're doing the camera rotation. So this camera rotation thing, that's modifying that object I was talking about before, um, this this guy here, this one here. Um, so yeah, they modify the rotation of this object inside late update and everything else is just done inside regular update. So yeah, that move function, that's um, the first half of this basically calculates how fast to move. Um, the second half basically calculates which direction to move. And then finally, it just calls the character controller move function and sets up some animation parameters, etc. The jump and gravity, yeah, that's all sort of just standard updating vertical velocity stuff. So yeah, I won't go into too much more of that. Um, <clears throat> so continuing on down the list, um, the next one is the basic rigid body push components. So this seems like a feature that they probably want to turn on by default. Um, if they're going to ship with it, I'm not really sure why it's off by default. But this box here, for example, um, it's static and I can't push it around. Um, but if I set the push layers to uh, like, I'll just set it to everything, but you could probably set it to default. I've also got to enable can push. And then um, I still can't push it yet because this object is not, it's a static collider. It's not actually, uh, it doesn't have a rigid body component. So if I attach a rigid body to that object, now I can actually push it around. And um, I can also control the strength of the push uh, inside that component. Boom, like that, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's it for that. These last two components, they are all to do with the new input system. So the player input component, this is the main sort of uh, handle, I guess, to the, the new input system, which points at um, this, this starter assets object here. So if you double click on that, Here's where you can see all of the actions. So you can see the move, the look, the jump, and the sprint. And the move has got, yeah, WASD uh, for the WASD keys. It's also got the arrow keys on the keyboard, um, the left stick on a gamepad. The look action has got the mouse pointer using the delta, uh, the right stick on the gamepad. The jump action has got the space key on the keyboard and the button south button on a gamepad so yeah like x or whatever the sprint action has got the left shift on the keyboard and the left trigger on the gamepad um, so one thing to note is there's no mention of touchscreen controls in here even though touchscreen is supported so how does all of that work um, basically there is this additional object here which is off by default and if you enable it here's the touchscreen controls so um, this is using all of the UI system. Um, it's just using the standard UI, uh, like unity.ui system. I think that's the namespace. And it's basically broken down into, if I just go to 2D view, uh, scroll out a bit. Yeah, there's basically these four objects here. Um, so we've, for each of these objects, there is a corresponding script, uh, UI virtual joystick. And this thing here, it's um, it's not using the new UI uh, input system. It's using the UI system. So it's using these pointer down handler, drag handler, pointer up handler. Um, that's how it's getting the input events from the touchscreen. So all of those events are processed inside these functions and then they're forwarded um, out through this Unity event. So that Unity event is here, you can see, and that forwards it onto the parent, the main canvas object, which has a script um, called UI Canvas Controller. This thing is, um, yeah, these uh, virtual functions like virtual move input, these are all getting invoked from um, the virtual joystick uh, and the other ones like virtual button, etc. All of those scripts are basically invoking um, those virtual functions here. And then they call into the starter assets input script, which is um, just as the other uh, component on the player, which we didn't cover this one here. And this has just got the move, the look, the jump and the sprint values. Um, so these four values here, they're the main sort of values here. These are just some options. And these values are written to from <clears throat> the like, these are like the input handler, the new input system event callback functions. 
Um, so yeah, that's basically how all of that works. So the new, um, well, the, the touchscreen controls use the UI system pointed down handlers. Uh, then they invoke um, these virtual functions here, which then just write to those, um, these move properties of the standard assets input component. Sweet. So I think that probably covers it, I think, for, for this package. I don't really have too much more to say. I think we covered the animation, we covered Cine Machine, lighting and environment. Yeah, I'm not really going to touch on too much. Um, and the virtual joystick, all of that stuff. Yeah, so I think that's it. Let me just double check if I've forgotten anything. No, I think that's everything. Cool. Sweet. So yeah, I mean, if you want to see more videos like this, then yeah, I'm pretty keen to cover some more assets like from the asset store and just do like a little bit more of a deep dive before you purchase them, for example. Um, I'm happy to purchase them and then, you know, uh, give you like a rundown of uh, what they're like and how to use them and stuff. And then you can kind of make your own decisions. But yeah, if you found this video useful, please uh, subscribe and give it a like. Really helps out the channel. Uh, that would be amazing. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Kaikite.